Like the Xbox Series X, the Sony PlayStation 5 is designed to manage its video settings automatically, so you get the best experience with whatever TV you have. But also like the Series X, that doesn't always work. So let's dig into all the PS5's video settings and make sure you're getting the most out of your new console. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison, and if you have a PS5 or hopefully get one eventually, you'll probably notice that everything in the video settings is set to automatic. And that may be just fine if your TV is set up correctly and your TV and console are communicating well with each other. But as I've noticed through extensive testing with multiple TVs, that often is not the case. Also, what do the manual settings in the PS5 mean and can you use them to your advantage somehow? And then there's the question of what the PS5 can actually do and what it can't. I'm gonna answer all of those questions, so stick around, let's do it. Real quick though, what do you think about the graphics quality from the PS5 so far, assuming you even got one? Are you impressed? Think it's gonna get better? Let me know down in the comments, and while you're at it, please like and subscribe because it helps us grow this channel and bring in all kinds of new gear we haven't been able to check out before. And as always, we've got affiliate links to the products we cover down in the description if you'd like to support us that way. As always, I appreciate you. Now, back to the PS5. So I mentioned this in my Xbox Series X settings video and I need to say the same thing here because it is important. You really need to make sure that your TV is set up well to handle things like HDR, 444 color sampling, variable refresh rate, and possibly HDMI 2.1 in general. If your TV is a 2019 model or newer, then most of this is automated. But dig around the settings menu and if you see something that says enable HDR or UHD color or deep color, turn it on for the HDMI input you're using. On other TVs, you may have to force HDMI 2.1 to turn on. Take this Vizio TV, for instance. It has an auto setting, but there's a bug right now that requires Vizio TV owners to force it into HDMI 2.1 mode. And once you do that, you really need to reboot the TV, otherwise you'll probably just get a black screen. Also, if you have HDMI CEC disabled, be sure to enable it because that can prevent some key communication between the console and the TV. Then, and this is mostly for OLED owners, if you have something like black level control, as we do on this LG C10 OLED, be sure to leave that on auto. I'll explain why in a little bit. Finally, if you have a 2020 or 2021 TV, try to find out if it has an HGIG mode. HGIG stands for HDR Gaming Interest Group, but what the setting on a TV means is that when this is enabled, the TV disables its dynamic tone mapping and lets the console and the game specify how HDR images should be displayed. It's fine if you don't have this, most TVs are pretty good about dynamic tone mapping themselves, but if you want things to be exactly as they were intended, this is a cool feature. Speaking of dynamic tone mapping and HDR, let's move on to the PlayStation 5 here because that's exactly what this little calibration process is for. First, make sure your TV is in the game mode or gaming picture preset. With that done, you can proceed with the PS5 initial setup process. Make sure that all these circles fit in the screen and aren't getting cut off. Your TV may have some overscan going on and this will just make sure you see the entire picture with nothing cut off. Then we get to the HDR part. Here, you're supposed to adjust the brightness of the symbol that looks like a sun until it's barely visible. This process helps the console understand what your TV's peak brightness is and what kind of shadow detail your TV can handle so that it can deliver an HDR image your TV can actually display. Otherwise, you might get crushed blacks and lose a bunch of highlight detail. With that done, we can now go to the PS5 settings wheel, click that, and go down to screen and video. Now, if we click on video output information at the top here, this should tell us what the TV is capable of. The current video output signal is 4K at 60 hertz, but we know we can bump that to 120 hertz with games like Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Color format is currently set to RGB as opposed to PC RGB. We'll talk more about that in a second. Then further down, we see HDR is supported. And then further, further down, we see all the frequencies supported. 24 hertz, right up to 120 hertz for both HDR and non-HDR. But interestingly, there's this little caveat to 120 hertz. It's gonna bring the chroma subsampling down for 120 hertz. Now, if you have no idea what I mean about chroma subsampling, I'll give you the basic rundown in a moment. Now we move down to resolution. This is one you want to keep set to automatic because the console really has no problem detecting your TV's capable resolution. Now, if you have a 4K TV, but you're only getting 1080p set automatically, 
that means you have a problem somewhere. It could be that you switched HDMI cables for something longer and it's not an ultra high speed cable, or it could be that your TV needs a reboot, like I mentioned earlier, so that the TV and PS5 can handshake again. Next is 4K video transfer rate. What does this mean and why would you use it? Well, what this means goes back to that chroma subsampling again. Chroma subsampling has to do with how much color information is being sent to the TV. There are three levels, 420, 422, and 444, with 420 delivering the least color information and 444 delivering the most. The less color information you have, the more you might get color banding. So imagine a blue sky that almost seems to have a rainbow of blues instead of it being nice and smooth gradients. Now, if your TV supports 444, automatic is going to pick that. But if the console and TV aren't jiving well with each other, you could get frame dropouts where the screen sometimes goes black. It could flicker on you. This allows you to drop the amount of color information going to your TV as a troubleshooting step. Minus one here drops you to 422, and minus two drops you to 420. Now, if you go at 120 hertz mode, the TV will automatically drop you to 422 because it can't deliver 120 frames per second and deliver full 444 color at the same time. That's just too much bandwidth for the PS5, which caps out at 32 gigabits per second, by the way. I can actually show you that with Call of Duty. We go into 120 hertz mode and we can see from this FreeSync readout, we have dropped to 422. Now we get to HDR, set to automatic. First off, if you have an HDR TV and this is set to off, I would suggest going back into your TV settings to make sure UHD color, deep color, or HDR, whatever it's called, that it's enabled for the input you're using. Now, however, I want to talk about how the way this setting is presented and how it's kind of problematic. I noticed with games and streaming apps, even if it was an SDR title, the TV was in HDR mode. This could be a problem because SDR content isn't meant to be presented in HDR and I'm not confident in the PS5's ability to do a tone mapping conversion. Like, I don't even like how it works in most TVs, which is why I always suggest keeping it off. With the exception of the PS5 Blu-ray app, which will correctly play back whatever is in the disc tray, the PS5 forces HDR on everything, and the only option here is to turn it off or always have it on. I would like to see a third option here that basically adheres to whether there is HDR metadata coming in or not and adjusts accordingly. Okay, rant over. Adjust HDR allows you to access that calibration sequence I showed you before. You might wanna come back to this if you move your TV to a dark room from a bright one or vice versa as how well you can see details can depend on ambient light. Deep color output is the next one. This should be set to automatic. If this is off, then your HDR will also be shut off too. So going back to what I said earlier, if you have an HDR TV, but this is off, make sure deep color or sometimes called UHD color is enabled and try again. RGB range, this can be really confusing. Thankfully, Vincent Tio at HDTV Test figured this out because I'm not sure I ever would myself. As I mentioned in the Xbox Series X video, a TV works with a certain range of code values while a PC monitor works with something different. That's because there's often a pretty big difference between a monitor's capabilities and a TV's, especially in terms of brightness. I highly recommend leaving this on automatic. If you select full, you'll notice nothing happens, but if you select limited, you'll notice the TV adjusts, which means we were in the full mode all along, and that's what we want. Now, you may remember earlier I mentioned that many TVs have a black level control, and I urge you to leave that at auto as well. You might think putting it at high would give you better blacks, but if you get the wrong combo of settings here, you'll actually over darken the picture and you definitely don't want that. Now, if we pop out of there and go to the screen section, you'll see you can go back into adjusting the display area as I showed you at the beginning of this video. But it's the next option to dim the screen after a certain amount of time that I wanna point out to you. I suggest if you own an OLED TV and tend to leave your TV on a lot, maybe step away from your games often, back this down to five minutes. It will just be that added level of assurance that you don't get any screen burn in. So outside of all of that, be sure to check out this accessibility section. If you have a vision or auditory disability, there's a lot in here that can help you have a better experience. You can boost the font size, make it bolder, you have closed caption options. There's a lot of important stuff here, so check it out if you think it might help your experience. And that's it. Hopefully you understand a little bit more about the PlayStation 5 settings and how they work so you can get the best possible experience. Thanks as always for watching everyone. Do you find these kind of videos helpful? Either way, let me know in the comments section. Also, please do like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. And here's two other videos I think you might like.